This will be the model that we will be producing in today's part one. It's a very basic portal frame, but I'll try and put in day-to-day -day structural objects so you can see just how user-friendly the working environment is. Now I'm running the power product of ProStructures V8i, which is what you would download and install from Bentley's select download website. All right, so what we're gonna start with today is a fresh drawing that has been created using a seed file or template. I have one that I prepared here a little bit earlier. And once we have our new drawing open, I'm gonna start by creating a work frame. Now you can see down in the lower left corner here that the program is prompting us with what it wants us to do. In this instance, I'd like the origin to be set at world zero. The next thing that I'd like to do is to place some columns around my work frame. To do this, we'll need to go to the Pro Steel menu. I select Shapes, and you can see here that we have a large selection of shapes to choose from. And these can be added to at any point in time. Now because I'm drawing a column, my insert point is going to be to the center. And I'd normally tell people to please insert by the two point method. But for this instance today, I'm going to tell ProSteel that I want to insert by the work frame. So I just basically draw a rectangle around the object and rotate, perfect. That looks good. Okay, next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to change the visual look of my modeling environment. In the view display style, I have many different options. My personal favorite is the transparent modeling. Now I'd like to put some rafters in. Again, I would normally place my rafters by the two point method. Okay, but I'm actually just gonna choose the work frame this time. I'm also going to put some mezzanine beams in. I'm going to move those down later. Using one of the standard microstation commands, I'm just going to copy these objects down from that grid. And let's move these beams down. About 2,500 should do it, just for this example. So we're gonna kick off with our base plates. Simply pick our base plate and uh, pick anywhere on the column that you'd like to insert the base plate on. And ProSteel will put in the base plate based on the user variables that uh, we have uh, set for us, either preset in here or preset with a template. And from there, it's just a simple case. If I wanted to match the other columns within here, I can simply clone around to the other columns that I want. Tab done. All done, nice and easy. Now let's hook up the rafter apexes. For this connection, we're gonna use the m plate connection tool. Let's pick the two rafters that I wanna hook up and uh, it'll put the uh, put a splice connection in for us. And from there, just like before, we're gonna pick the other rafters that we want to match. Nice and simple, there we go. After that, we're going to connect the rafter to the columns. We're gonna use the same end plate command. We're going to clone that now round to all the other column rafter connections. All done. Nice and easy. Now let's put some 
shear plates on these mezzanines. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, that looks terrific. Okay, and I just want to clone that around the rest of the job. So. pick the members that I'd like it to match that same connection to. There we go. All done. That looks terrific. All right. Next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to add some bracing in here. In our ProSteel commands, we're going to choose now some dynamic bracing. I'll put a couple of bays of bracing in. There's a couple of different ways that we can choose to put this in here. Uh, just to make things nice and easy for the moment, I'm just going to put it in by two nominated points and just select the two supporting members that are going to hold that up. You can see it pops in the last bracing that was used. If we go out to our templates, we have a nice little range of templates here that we can use. Um, shape bracing, two bolts with a center strap. Sounds terrific. Put a bit of cross bracing in using angle. And while we're here, we might put some in the bay next to it as well. Now, just for fun, let's place some floor beams longitudinally across our building. So I'm just going to go somewhere about the center here. That sounds fine to me. That looks pretty good. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move this one sideways and then uh, I'll copy his mate over. So I'll just go that way, 750, and then we'll copy him back, 1500. Yeah, perfect. Now I'll put an interesting bit of a connection in here now. I think I'll uh, so pop in a, a full height stiffener now. So I'm just going to go from supported to supporting. Okay, and just uh, just want to be a little bit careful about sort of how these go in, and you can see here that there's uh, all sorts of settings, and I can uh, change what side I want things on, and so forth. Now let's add some C200 floor joists in between our portal frames. Now I know this is a little unrealistic, but let's just. Uh, Pop them in anyway. So there we go there, that's all done. You can see that it's hooked them all up there. So a fair bit of work for it there to do, but it's done a nice job of that. We're going to do all the roofing and walls in Z200 purlins. As you can see, it's, it's pretty quick to set the purlins out. I'll make them 219s and flip them over. You can see it sets them out pretty quick. We don't want them as close centers as the joists. So we'll set these guys out a little bit differently. And we just run around and we select the sections that we'd like to support. Drop the walls in now. Yeah, they're flipped around the right way. That looks good. Just using our standard microstation tools here, we can spin it around. Lovely. Even put some across the back here if we wanted to. Alternatively, we could uh, drop those in a different way if we wanted to. So actually, let's do that. We'll do that a little bit later on. So let's just drop those guys back out. Let's come back and uh, we'll uh, we'll do those guys a little bit differently later. We use the Pro Steel Block Center here, and you can see that there's a whole heap of bits and pieces in here that I've uh, created in the past. But those uh, they're, they're Z200s, so we'll. Uh, We'll bring one of these guys in. Just drop him down there. And we're done. So what I want to do with this guy here 
So just probably rotate him around so that he matches up with the other, with with where I want to place him. So just using the standard microstation commands here, probably rotate this guy around, uh, maybe a two point, just for fun. There we go. And actually, we want him around that way, don't we? There we go. Happy with that. Now I probably want to move this in now. It's one of the nice things about the microstation and ProSteel environment is how friendly it is to be able to mix and match objects and so forth. So what I'm going to do is just uh, shorten these guys up so that I can move him in. Now another nice thing here that you can see is you can just grab the objects and drag them back along their length. It's very, very user friendly. And I'm just going to grab this guy here and I'm going to move him and I'm just going to pick a, a nominal point here on this guy and match him up to there. Perfect. That'll do. Okay. And now we're, what we're going to do is we're just going to shuffle this guy along. A couple of things that I'd like to do now is uh, probably line these guys up the top of here so they all line up nice and neat again just dragging those along by the length really user friendly nice easy environment to model in and what we're going to do is we're going to set all these up at the right heights and so forth now so you can see in essence it's nothing's really set in stone with this you um, you can manipulate all this stuff however you want and whatever is convenient for you. So in this instance here, I, I, I need to physically stretch all these guys up. So the easiest way to do, I just don't want to grab those bolts by accident on the back. So I'll just shorten that guy up and um, stretch all of those up from probably that point there. And I'm just going to lock it in the uh, lock it in the Y and tell it that I want it to come up to there and that's fine and that would have just dragged everything up with it and now I could drag that guy back so now the last thing that I've got to do is I want to join all these guys up okay and make one entity out of them so to speak so I'm going to go to the Prestel modify command here and say that I just want to connect these purlins back up with each other bang nice and easy How simple is that? There we go. And there is our complete wall. Just have a quick zoom in there for you. Nice and neat. Really friendly. The final thing I'd like to do is turn my Eve Perlins into fascias. So I'm going to go to the object properties and change the shape type. So that's these guys here. I can simply at the moment they're Australian Z Perlins and I'm just going to change them to a C. Say C 219 sounds fine. All right. I just need to change the location of them as well. So probably roll him up and flip him over. There we go. Now I've got to change the location of these guys as well. So. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to, um, again, using the, the core microstation tools, I'm just going to do a couple of construction lines here. Just to help me with my working. Perfect. All right. So just to assist me with that kind of thing, so I can just grab that guy there now and move him over to here. 
All right, which is where the fascia would be.